How you doing, everybody? Hey, DJ. What are your thoughts on the upcoming trip? Is there any kind of logistical changes you guys, maybe you individually, the rest of the team are making because of the cross-country trip? Maybe going to bed early or anything like that? Uh, no, nah, I think we're just treated all the same. I feel like the only difference we'll have is just leaving on a Thursday and everything. But, you know, like, we'll just have to, that's just another thing we'll just have to battle against. It's just the time and everything. But I just feel as if through the way we prepare, the way the staff prepares us and everything, we just have a great support system that will just help us overcome that. And then on the field, the team has kind of gone off to, to a few slow starts in recent games. For you guys as players mentally, what is the, the challenge, the balance of not watching the scoreboard, but also knowing that you're going to have to play catch up in a certain extent? I mean, the whole the whole kill is just the, you know, just don't give up with each other. Like we always say, the offense got the defense, the defense got the offense, and the special teams got everybody. So, you know, the whole point is, is just make sure everybody just stays with each other, just no negative energy on the sidelines. And like I said, when one side starts slow, the other side, you got to pick up the slack until the other side picks it up. That's all it is. What does it mean to have the opportunity to play the number one team in the nation? Uh, it feels good. I feel like it would be a stage just like USC to just prove ourselves East Coast versus West Coast. But at the end of the day, we, we're going to play everybody the same. You know, the ranking is the ranking. But, you know, it, it won't change how we play. We'll, we'll keep playing like everybody's the number one team in the country. So it's just that's the mentality we kind of have at this point. Easier when you've got – in effect, two weeks to prepare for them. You guys had the bye week. Yeah, we definitely had two weeks to prepare extra film on them just from the mission game and everything. I feel as if everything would be great just to get people bodies back, all hurt players that we're we're getting back healthy and everything. Just you know, we just have we have, we have the key guys to battle with them. So this two week preparation definitely is great. What jumps off the tape? What might we not be able to see that you guys can see about this Oregon team that makes them so special? Oh, uh, they're fast. They're 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 uh, they're a fast paced offense. They're one of the most explosive. Explosive offices will play this year and everything. And we'll just, we're just going to keep up with the wheel. We're trained to keep up with everybody in the country. And it'll just be another team in the day in the office. DJ, uh, obviously, outside, everyone kind of views you guys as the underdogs in this game. Is, is that something that you guys embrace? Uh, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't really pay attention to the, the outside voices. We know what kind of team we are. We know who we are at the end of the day. We feel as if we could compete with anybody in the country, and we just need Saturdays to prove that. Is there a sense, though, you know, with this being the number one team, that maybe you guys can have nothing to lose, maybe play a little bit more uninhibited? I mean, yeah, that, that's that's kind of the narrative, nothing to lose. But, you know, like, we're, we're coming out guns blazing, and that's that's kind of the initiative for every game at this point. Like, at this point, we're just trying to go bowling. So we're just here to just keep it rolling, and we're just going to treat everybody as if they're the best. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, wow. Hey, Bill, the opportunity to play the number one team in the country, obviously a big deal, but also a chance to get closer to a, a bowl eligibility. Does that even make it like another level more of a, a challenge in some ways? Yeah, I would say, you know, it's it's a great opportunity. I think obviously as you get into November, you get to the end of the season um, in these games. Every game is is more important, and this one's, you know, the biggest one because it's the next one. Um, and I think, you know, everyone in the, in the building, everyone in the facility from, you know, top down, whether it's the coaches or, or the players kind of know, you know, what, what a good opportunity we have in front of us. And, you know, we're, we're in here in November. Um, you know, the season's gone as it has, you know, up until this point. And, you know, right now we have a great opportunity in front of us. So why not, you know, put put the best we could practice together, put the best game plan together, and, you know, go out there and, and execute and see what we can do. So I think it's just a great opportunity that, you know, a lot of the guys we're all just trying to embrace. Um, you know, talking to yesterday at breakfast, talking to Coach Coach Thompson, um, you know, just he was like, not many times in my career have I gotten the opportunity to, you know, play the number one team in the country. He's like, sometimes I've been on the number one team, but, I, you know, not many opportunities to go against, you know, the number one team in the country, the best team in the country right now. So it's it's a it's a great opportunity. We're all excited for it. You know, looking forward to to going up there, being in a great environment. You know, great crowd. Um, you know, first obviously their first year in the Big Ten. So I think we're all just excited for it. You know, like I said, we got to put a you know a good week of practice together. Obviously, a good week and a half coming off the bye week, getting uh, being able to steal a few extra days there, and, and you know, go to Eugene and see what we can do. What have the conversations been like with Locks over the last couple of weeks? Um, I don't know if you by asking about the, your interceptions, has that been a the conversation all to kind of limit those turnovers and 
that kind of deal? Yeah, I would say just the the main you know the main point of the conversations with him, and even on the bye week, obviously I was able to get away, you know, go home, go watch my brother, get away for you know for a few days. But I think the biggest thing for me um, is just owning you know controlling what I can control, right? In the sense of you know, Coach Locks always talk about as a quarterback, you got to be able to mitigate risk. Um, you know, whether it's a good play, bad play, you, you can't make it worse. Um, so obviously those turnovers, you know, we've talked about, but you know, from August. First, when we started practicing, now the, the conversation and the message has been the same um, in terms of just, you know, as the quarterback, as the leader of the offense, the play starts with me and ends with me. Um, so I just got to make sure I continue to, to do to the best of my ability, owning, you know, owning my grit, as he'd say, controlling what I can control. Um, and, you know, I feel like if I can, you know, continue to get back at that and continue to own that, then, you know, I'll, I'll put the, the offense and, you know, the team in the best position to be successful when the play call comes in. Um, so that was just the biggest thing, you know, between those conversations and between the conversations I have with myself when going back, you know, over the bye, we can be able to watch the past couple, um, past couple of games offensively, and you know, see what we did well, and you know, what we need to get corrected. Just you know, going back to <clears throat> going back to the basics for me of just you know, continuing to own my grid, control what I can control, whether that's you know, not making a bad play worse, or you know, taking a, a shot, taking an opportunity when you know the one, you know, presents itself. It's it's just getting back to that, and just you know, making sure I, I focus on what I can control, and you know, do that to the best of my ability, and then you know, the the bigger things will take care of itself. Billy, Oregon's defense kind of under the radar this season when you look at all the firepower they have on offense, but they're third in the Big Ten in defensive passing efficiency, third in the conference in sacks as well. What do you, ha when you've, from what you've seen on tape, what do you have to be more concerned with this Friday with the stuff they throw at you? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, across the board, you know, whether it's up front or back in the secondary, they're very, you know, very, very talented, very, very skilled. Um, they have a lot of experience. You know, with some guys that have gotten in the transfer portal or guys that have been there the past couple of years under that, you know, defense coordinator and head coach's scheme. Um, I think the biggest thing, <clears throat> being able to get a beat on them. You know, they're, they're going to do, they're, they're very good at what they do and they're going to line up and do what they do. Um, obviously, you know, they, they come kind of from a, an SEC defensive, you know, family tree, if you would say. So, you know, they have some some different schemes, some complicated schemes that, that they run very well. Um, so getting a beat on that, you know, you know, trusting the game plan, knowing obviously for me individually, making sure I watch the tape and know, you know, kind of be prepared for what's going to come. And there's, you know, I'm sure there'll be new stuff that they won't have shown all year. Um, <clears throat> but I think the biggest thing that, you know, with the, the message offensively with, you know, between me and Coach Locks and Coach Locks and the offense and the team, it's just, you know, our playmakers are going to have to show up. You know, they're they're very skilled on the, on the outside, you know, in the secondary they're very big you know strong fiscal up front do a great job of stopping the run game and you know the, the different kind of looks or fronts they'll give up there uh, but you know we're just it, I kind of say the same thing every week but this week even more right it's going to come down to execution and you know our playmakers including myself are going to have to show up and make plays um, and this is you know this is the the week where you know you get a, an opportunity at the number one team in the country a, a you know top five defense in the country that we got to go out there and execute and you know there's going to be times where it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup and you know the best decision for me is going to be able to, to give Ty or KP or Octavian and Smith a, a chance at a one-on-one, -on -one and I'm going to have to give them a good enough ball, and then they're going to have to go make the play. So I think that's the biggest thing for us is just the execu execution piece of it and then knowing that, you know, it's going to take playmakers making plays, and, and I think all our guys offensively are excited for that opportunity to go against, you know, the best of the best and, and see what we can do. Just like last year, you guys enter November with the opportunity to play for postseason play. You can't, you know, lock it down this week, but the road is out there for you guys to take. Uh, how did last year having to, you know, win in November to assure eligibility, you know, bowl eligibility, how has that helped you guys this year in the mindset moving forward? Yeah, I'd say, you know, the like I say, the, the Big Ten play, it's going to be, you know, once you get a Big Ten play, it's going to be a, a dogfight regardless of the week, regardless of the opponent, home or away. Um, and, you know, getting into November, the, the state that we're in right now as the season goes, has gone along that, you know, I think we have a lot of older, a lot of talented players that have been here for the three straight bowl games that have had to go, you know, had to scrap and fight to get to that sixth, seventh win, the eighth win in the bowl game. Games. Um, so I think we all kind of know, you know, we all know what's at stake and we all know that that every game in, in November is, you know, even more important than the games earlier in the season. And, you know, we got four great opportunities, you know, staring in front of us. And I think right now we're all, you know, everyone in that building, including myself, is, is you know, focused on this one right in front of us. It's it's the biggest one, like I said, because it's the next one. And, you know, we obviously want to continue, you know, our have the opportunity to go to a bowl game and continue our season um, there into December and January. And we know that, you know, we got to get to the next four um, for that to be a possibility. And right now we're focused on this one. So I think it's it's definitely, you know, creates more, you know, a bigger sense of urgency, but I think we have a lot of guys, you know, older guys that have, you know, been to bowl games and have, have been here where we've had to lay the foundation to make it to three straight, kind of know what it's going to take. Um, so I think we're all just, you know, we're all excited for the opportunity, you know, as, as an older player, getting those young guys, you know, you know, up and excited and, and kind of 
ready and prepared for what November football and the Big Ten is going to bring. Um, obviously, you know, we got to travel to the West Coast. We got to go to a completely different environment. You know, things of that nature comes into play when you play in November um, in the Big Ten. So I think we're all, you know, we're all excited for the opportunity. And we know, obviously, we got to get two more. And we got a, a huge one this week that we're all, you know, you know, putting our, our best foot forward in and, you know, putting all the time and effort that we can go out there and have a good chance on Saturday. Hey, Billy. Um, rare to have a second bye week in a season like you guys have this this year. Did, has anything felt different this week in terms of preparation and just the game planning and going through everything than it did just a month ago when you guys had the first one? Yeah, I would say a little bit, you know, just definitely with offensively, just, you know, I think spend it this, uh, a similar way in terms of going back, you know, individually looking at, you know, what I can improve on, um, especially from the last three to four weeks um, after that first bye week. But definitely, you know, I think it, I think the biggest thing is it helps with the bodies. Obviously, right, we're playing 12 games. Getting the two bye weeks gets a lot of guys, you know, chances to, to get their bodies right, including myself, you know, get a few days off to where we can rest, recover, you know, get, get our minds away from football for a little bit. But I think, you know, it, it gave us another chance to kind of sit back, reflect, you know, everyone get, get a chance to look in the mirror and then also, you know, look forward at, you know, the, the opportunity that we have in front of ourselves for the last four weeks of the season in November. And, you know, we have, we have a lot of good opportunities. I think a lot of guys spent it right, you know, getting away from here, getting able to, to get their mind outside of football, get their bodies right. And now, you know, we're back in here and we're, we're in here for the last, you know, four final games of the, of the regular season in hopes to, to make a bowl game. So I think, I think it was good. Um, I think, you know, definitely – the, there, there wasn't too much of a difference between the first bye week, but I think where we are, ne where we are now, and where we are before the first bye week, I think there was definitely a good. You know, we were able to have a good mindset um, shift, you could say, and, and knowing that you know we got a, a, a tough stretch for those last four games, and you know we have some good opportunities. So why not, you know, pick up the pieces, put them together, and see what we can do over the next four weeks. And I know you said you went to Texas uh, the first time around for some practice and some reps. Did was that similar for you? Or was this more just about being healthy and just taking rest time? And stuff? Yeah, it was. It was a little bit of both. I didn't. I didn't go anywhere. You know, out of town to work out. Um, obviously, obviously was up here all of last week, um, you know, just trying to get my body right, going back and watching the last four games. Um, kind of, you know, what I said earlier, just, you know, figuring out how I can do a better job of just, of just continuing to own my square, own my grid, control what I can control. Um, and then it was good, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, was able to get out of here. I went down to Richmond, watched my brother's game, um, was able to go home and see my dog. Don't, you know, don't get many opportunities to do that. So I was able to get, you know, a good, a good mental reset, get out of here for a little bit. Um, Obviously, still watch football. Went, you know, was watching games on my phone while I was at my brother's game. Um, so it was a good, you know, it was a good balance of just getting the body right, and then obviously getting, you know, mentally being able to get away from here for a few days to before we come back and you know strap it up for the last four weeks. Billy, um, uh, in many circles, Oregon is regarded as significant, significant favorite. Does that bother you and your teammates when you see that? No, I would say, you know, we're we're focused on what, you know, what's inside the buildings. Um, I think, you know, you can say it always it always proves this extra motivation, you know, to to kind of be the underdog. Um, but I think a lot of guys in those locker rooms as, as well as Coach Locks have always been the underdog, you know, throughout their careers, throughout their lives. Um, and I think, you know, that's something that, that we find comfort in, you know, having that chip on our shoulder mentality. Uh, but I wouldn't say we, we pay attention too much to the outside noise. I think, you know, a lot of guys do a good job of just focusing on on the task at hand, you know, Monday through Friday to, to give us a chance to go out there and be successful Saturday. Um, and I think that's, you know, that that is the same for this week, even though, you know, we're playing the number one team in the country. It's it's a big deal. It's a big game. I think we're all focused on, on what we can do, you know, to give ourselves a chance to be successful against the number one team in the country. So I wouldn't say, you know, we're too caught up in it. I think, you know, it can prove as extra, you know, motivation. But I think a lot of guys already have that motivation, you know, within them, uh, within the walls of JHH, knowing that, you know, we got all we need in there. And, and you know, we're, we're going to put together a great week of practice and go up there to Eugene and see what we can do. With that in mind, then, does, is there a sense that maybe you and your teammates can play free, maybe uninhibited um, against the number one team? Uh, you could say that, yeah. I think Coach Locks' goal always, right, with, with, you know, with players is just to have them, let them play free. Um, obviously, you know, the, the, the kind of phrase that gets thrown around, you know, in, in my world is the, the flow state, right? At quarterback, when you, when you get in that flow state, when you get some completions and, and you know, things are just clicking and you have answers um, to stuff, then, yeah, you're playing free. You're playing, you know, you're playing fast. You're playing smart. Um, you're not playing careless by any means, um, but you're able to go out there and just, you know, you really it really takes you back to, to being a little kid playing football again. So I think a lot of guys, you know, I have developed that confidence throughout the year um, and getting really good, you know, meaningful game time experience, whether it's younger guys, older guys, to where, yeah, we're in November now, we're in game nine or ten to, you know, where they can go out there and play free. And, and you know, the, the coaches do a good job of instilling confidence in us so that we can go do it. Um, and I think the, the other, you know, flip side of that is it falls on us to, to continue to develop that confidence and keep it um, so that we can go out there and, and not be, you know, hesitant or, or double, you know, 
know, double thinking our, our moves um, and just go out there and play free. And when, you know, everyone in that building plays free, we give ourselves a really, really good chance to be successful against, you know, whoever we play. Um, so I think that's just that's just the goal for everyone this week. And, you know, that starts with the, the preparation and the practice that we've been doing the last week. Uh, so we got to put together a few more good ones before we go up there. You know, we'll get one there. Um, and then, you know, like I said, we'll, we'll have a good week of preparation and then we'll go out there and play free Saturday and see what we can do. Um, I wouldn't say no. I think I know a lot of people inside the building that, that are there to help us are, are doing stuff to help us, trying to be proactive about it, get ahead. Um, obviously, this is my first time, you know, going cross country um, to play a football game. So I'm sure there'll be things that I learned from this trip. But I think, you know, whether it's our dietitian staff, our training staff, um, operational, whether it's, you know, how we're, how we're traveling, they're doing a good job at being proactive about all that. Um, you know, has spent a lot of time, a lot of money into this trip, you know, giving ourselves the best chance at traveling, when to travel, how to, how to make sure our bodies get adjusted, you know, in the right time to give ourselves the best chance to go out there and play on West Coast time. So I wouldn't say there's anything I'm doing too much, you know, for myself. Uh, but I know there are a lot of people, you know, behind closed doors doing a lot of stuff for our team to, to get, you know, to give ourselves the best chance to go out there and, you know, have to deal with the travel and be successful. And then this season, there have been a bit of a trend, a recent trend of slow starts um, falling into an early deficit. When it kind of keeps on happening, is there maybe a mental, a mental hurdle? You, you players, you specifically just kind of have to take to where you don't fall into the same habit of, okay, we keep letting this happen, how do we get out of this? What mentally goes through your mind and how do you get out of that? Yeah, I would say, you know, obviously as a quarterback, the, the offense starts and ends with me. Um, so mentally just, you know, just, Obviously, with Coach DeJaron, right, when we talk before games, um, you know, we don't ever want to have a feeling out period. We want to come out and, and you know, let the thing rip from, from the first half to the last. Um, and I think offensively, you know, whether it's whatever, there's there's many things we can look at. I think individually me just knowing that, you know, regardless of what the play's called, that, that I'm, you know, I'm as locked in as I can be. I'm in my flow state because, um, you know, like I said, it starts and ends with me. And, you know, when, when, I'm, when I'm playing pretty good, about 99% of the time, the offense is playing pretty good, um, and we're able to make things happen. So I'd say, you know, there isn't too much of a mental hurdle. I think it's more just a, se a sense of urgency, especially with the older guys on the offense, you know, between me, Ty Felton, Caden Prather, Roman Hemby, um, just, you know, in, in us talking, knowing that, you know, we got to come out guns ablazing, and whether that's, you know, take a shot to first play, run the ball, whatever it is, you know, we got to find a way um, to go out there and, and start hot, uh, you know, especially the way our defense has been playing, to, to start hot and, you know, give, our, give ourselves a chance to create that momentum, you know, that kind of helps us, you know, stay in it um, throughout the whole game. So I wouldn't say there's there's too much of a mental hurdle, just more of a sense of urgency knowing that when we go out there, you know, the game's only 60 minutes, you know, why waste it? We got to go out there and take advantage of it every time we get the ball. You know, we got to go out there and do do our best to, to execute the play and, and to create explosive plays um, and give ourselves a chance to score points. So I wouldn't say, you know, not too much of a change up, just knowing that, you know, we got to go out there and start fast um, and just continue to execute the plays that are called. Appreciate it.